Well, back pain is very common and as they would say, at least, you know, every other person at some point in time in life has had an experience with back pains. So, we get to understand just what informs this, we get to understand how chronic it can get, we get to understand what could have, uh, you know, been the main reason as to why one gets to experience back pain and how do we avoid scenarios where it gets to that chronic level. And so we'll be having a specialist on board who will help us go through this conversation as we get to know the back pains, the symptoms, the remedies, you know, diagnoses and all these things in a nutshell. So in the next about 30 minutes or so, we'd love to welcome you to be part and parcel of the conversation. Uh, if you have any questions, then we have an orthopedic on board, an orthopedic surgeon for that matter, so that he can get to answer some of these questions that you could be having. And well, in the event that it is getting worse, then it is important that you go out there and seek medical advice. So Dr. Thuo Rigisha, who's an orthopedic surgeon, joins me this morning for this special conversation, a very crucial conversation. As I always say, this is one of my best segments because when we speak matters health, then you know how important it is for you and for me. So Karibu Sana, Dr. Tari, good to have you this morning yes. and equally welcome to this conversation once again, even as we ask those questions and as we continue having this sober conversation. So let's speak back pains. What exactly is, 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 is this one thing that causes back pains? Is it different depending on different people? And why would we speak of a scenario where at some point in time, mm -hmm. at least every individual has experienced back pains? Okay. Thank you, Linda, for welcoming me, for having me in this show. Yep. Um, back pain is a big issue for most individuals. They say approximately 80% of the world's population will experience back pain at some point um, in their life. Yeah. Probably most of us have experienced back pain at some point in, the, in our life. Mm -hmm. Mainly the part of the back that is mainly uh, of nuisance is the lower, lower part of the back. Yeah. Because, uh, as we know, our back stretches all the way from our occiput to our, to our buttocks. And the lower part of the back is what uh, is usually problematic to many people. Why the lower back is mainly because uh, it carries most of the weight of the body. Okay. All our weight is mainly transmitted through what we call our backbone, or what we call in the medical term the vertebral collapse. And the lower part of the vertebral column now mm -hmm. carries most of the body weight. Um, the other reason why uh, mainly the b lower back is because most of the body movements happen at the lower back. Okay. If you have to bend forward, if you have to swing or uh -huh. twist your waist, all, right. uh, all these movements will happen mainly at the lower back. Um, and that's why people with certain activities uh, that are repetitive activities are the ones which will who will mainly complain of this uh, lower back pain. Okay. Yes. All right. So when you speak about that, then what do we talk about in terms of the symptoms? I know one would want to imagine that it's a straight uh, as you know you feeling pain you know somewhere at the back, but just. What are some of these uh, symptoms that we are talking about? Mm -hmm. What would it include for one to conclude now this is back pain? Because I'm told that there are scenarios where, you know, out of uh, pain from the hand, mm -hmm. then, you know, it impacts on the entire body and there's so much pain across the different part of the body. And so in that case, you'd realize that maybe you could be having, say, you know, something uh, like, like a wound that would cause, that would get you feeling pain or that would get you having, you know, back pain. So when we're talking about back pain in particular, what are some of the key things that you look at and note and say that yes, this is back pain? Okay. So uh, basically mainly for back pain, the usual back pain, because there are many causes of back pain, mm -hmm. but there's what we call uh, basically the muscle, muscular back pain. Yes. Mainly it's just a dull feeling of pain in the lower back. Um, severity is dependent on, uh, the, or rather the severity of the pain is dependent on uh, probably the activity or the acuteness of the of the condition, okay. the onset of symptoms, mm -hmm. or probably even the, the, the causative agent. Okay, if it's not only muscular, it could be because of other causes, then the pain might be more severe than mm -hmm. in other scenarios that we are used to, the usual muscular back pain that we usually call the, the positional back pain because it's usually caused by the position you assume most of the time, depending on the activities you engage yourself in. Right. Um, 
There are other things we usually call the red flags of back pain. The red flags of back pain okay. are the things that will tip you off towards deciding, is this the usual back pain that we are used to, right. muscular back pain? Okay. Or could it be something more severe? Could it be something more hidden than just the back pain that we are used to? Okay. Um, and this will come in the setting of uh, things like uh, you get neurological uh, effects. Neurological meaning that the nerves are involved. So you'll get someone complaining of tingling sensation, mm -hmm. someone complaining of numbness, someone complaining of uh, um, weakness of the, of the legs and so on. Um, the other things that can tip you off towards uh, the red flags, something like a fever that could suggest main that there could be something like an infection in the back that is making this individual spike a fever. Mm -hmm. If there is a history of severe trauma, that's also a red flag. If someone was involved in a, in a road traffic accident, fell from a height, and then all of a sudden they've developed severe uh, back pain, okay. then again that's a red flag towards uh, signs of something that could be more than just the usual back pain that mm -hmm. we are used to. Mm -hmm. And maybe those are the things that could tip you off towards think, seeking uh, mm -hmm. medical mm -hmm. advice and not just only trying the, the home remedies. All right. Well, yes. that's, 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 that's really important to know. I hope you are taking note of uh, such because in most cases we tend to experience such, but we overlook. And now when we speak about that also, then uh, it brings to me that it is important we speak of the risk factors. You yes. know, so what are some of the risk factors that would push one uh, you know, to experiencing back pain? Mm -hmm. And how then do you handle them mm -hmm. before it gets to that point? Okay. Mm. So among the risk factors, uh, first and foremost is age. Right. Uh, you'll find as age progresses, uh, people tend to get back pain more than they, w they were getting when they were younger mm. individuals. Mm. Um, so is there that something that can be done to stop this? Um, some of them, no, most, most, in most scenarios, no, because it's part of the aging process. Okay. Uh, we call it g degenerative uh, disease, meaning as, as you advance in age, some changes happen in your body that mm -hmm. are not reversible and that's just part of uh, the human development. Okay. Um, two is uh, weight. Weight is a big factor when it comes to, to back pain mm -hmm. because as we said most of our weight is transmitted through our, our back. So if you carry a lot of uh, a big load then definitely you will have to complain. Yeah. Um, I usually give my patients the example of a, of a truck and a small vehicle. Okay. A truck that is carrying a heavy load will often go to the garage more often than a small vehicle that's carrying a smaller load. So the bigger you are, the more your back will hurt. Mm -hmm. um, other risk factors are the activities that we usually engage ourselves into, our occupations. Okay. So you'll find um, there are Four, more, four main things that the back doesn't like. And one of them is standing for long, uh, sitting down for long, uh, lifting heavy objects when you're bending. And uh, the, fourth one is, uh, the fourth one is bending for long. Yeah. So you'll find all those people who engage in activities, their occupations uh, relate to all these four activities. Mm -hmm they will come to the clinic complaining of back pain. So you'll find a receptionist who has to sit down from 8 to 5. She will have back pain. A surgeon like me who has to stand in theater for long hours will have back pain. Okay. Uh, the casual laborer who will bend the whole day from morning till around 1, mm -hmm. they'll have back pain. Mm -hmm. That mason who is lifting a heavy stone uh, will also complain of back pain. Mm -hmm. So our occupation will mainly uh, contribute a big factor towards us getting back pain. What about uh, suffering from, uh, you know, say mental illnesses and all that? Yes. Do they in a way have a connection in uh, some of the things that people would have? Mm -hmm. um, yes, psychosocial effects have uh, a key role in, uh, in back pain. Okay. Uh, there have been uh, studies that have uh, connected uh, uh, psychosocial conditions like depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder uh, to back pain. Um, in that line also, I've come across uh, people who are not satisfied at their workplace uh, okay. also tend to get back pain. Back pain. All right.
right? Yes. Well, that's interesting. Uh, speaking of which, uh, if I pick key of the risk factors that you have mentioned, I realize that some of them maybe are things that probably we can try and limit yes. or we can try and reduce mm -hmm. or we can try and curb, you know, in totality. So in this case, um, are there some things that would consider as, you know, as lifestyle expectations that would mm -hmm. help us deal with these, uh, you know, risks that would pose us to a situation where we have to go through back pains or, you know, experience, you know, unhealthy moments in life, for instance, uh, in terms of what it is that we eat, in terms of the practice, mm -hmm. in terms of what it is that we feed ourselves into information, like you rightfully put it, mm -hmm. if you don't like your workplace, then you might be, you know, uh, at a possible risk of experiencing back pain. So in that case, you can decide, well, this is not working for me. Let me not be here and be at a different direction or just let go of that. So what are some of the key things that one would say, you know, lifestyle-wise, they would incorporate in themselves to ensure that they you know, go down on the risks. Okay. Um, like I'd said before, mainly back pain is mainly because of position. Okay. And that's why we call it positional uh, back pain. And uh, among the key things that uh, we really advocate for uh -huh. when we are talking about uh, back pain is how you modify your, your position. Um, if you have to sit down for long, first, if you have to sit down, you have to be in a position whereby your body and your trunk are uh, at 90 degrees, mm -hmm. like I'm seated right now, uh, with your foot resting on the floor. The floor. Okay. okay. Um, so if you have to sit on a seat, it should be a firm seat uh, with a straight uh, back so that you rest your back straight on your, on your seat. Mm -hmm. um, you don't lean forward. You don't lean backwards um, because those are the positions that usually affect your back uh, due to the weight transmission. Mm -hmm. um, two is standing for long. If you have to stand for long, uh, you make sure you adjust your weight uh, from one side to the other. I'm sure you've seen people who stand adjusting their position. They dip towards one side at this moment. After yeah. a few minutes, they dip towards the other side. Um, that also helps to give your back some rest. Um, also on the line of standing, uh, it's advisable to stand, if you have to stand for long, you stand with one foot stepping higher than the other, okay. about six to eight inches higher than the other, so that you give your back some bit of rest. Um, it's advisable not to bend for so long. Uh, uh, try avoid bending for so long as much as possible. Avoid lifting heavy objects when you're bending. If you have to lift something heavy, you squat, get a hold of the object that you want to to lift okay. and then use your thigh muscles to prop yourself plus okay. the object up mm -hmm. always make sure you hold the object as close to your body as uh, as possible to avoid straining straining your back yeah. um the other risk uh, among the risk factors the other modifiable things you can do is uh, of course the weight uh, so we advocate for weight loss uh, as much as possible okay uh, because the weight kind of uh, adjust your center of gravity of your body and uh, putting a strain now on your on your on your back okay um, the other thing among us the risk factors that I did mention is smoking uh, I know smoking is blamed for so many things yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's advisable if you're a smoker you're experiencing back pain it's advisable to try as much as possible I know it's not easy but to try as much as possible to to quit the the smoking habit mm. yes all right well i know you have you know in a way touched on this on what i know mm -hmm. uh, should get you thinking that it is important that you go out there and seek a doctor's um, advice yes. but i'd love for us to expound on it some more first in regards to you know what one needs to do mm -hmm. in the event that they are experiencing back pains mm -hmm. maybe and, and this is on an abnormal way Mm -hmm. And uh, when should they now say that officially, I am worried about my back pain? Mm -hmm. And at what point then do they get to the doctor? Mm -hmm. And what are some of the key question, the, uh, questions that one would want to seek to understand from the doctor? Okay. Mm. Um, first and foremost, if uh, you're experiencing back pain, uh, it shouldn't be a reason for b bed rest. Activity is very important, okay. especially in people with back pain. Does it not so, then harm the back some more? 
No, actually, it's yeah. therapeutic. I have, I've, I have literally been in experiences mm -hmm. where I've had to tell you know kids to come and and and, and you know walk mm -hmm. on top of my back. Mm -hmm. You try and do some exercises. It feels mm -hmm. a bit more painful, mm -hmm. but then again, in a way, it brings in some relief. Yes. Yeah. So it, it gives you that pain when, when like they are stepping on your back at that moment, but mm -hmm. gives you some form of relief, because we advocate really for physical activity for for patients with back pain because. As you rest, your muscles are still working on the joints around your, mm -hmm. your body. So there are things we call the joint reaction forces. Okay. They're actually more at rest than they are when you're engaged in an activity. All right. So we advocate for activity so that to, to, to try and make the situation better other than uh, bed rest. Bed rest will try and make the, the situation worse. Worse, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, on that line of... Uh, when should someone decide that they need to seek medical attention? One yeah. is if the pain becomes so severe. It's not responding to the usual things you used to do and it responds to. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you get back pain and uh, you have someone step on your back, it used to respond, uh, it no longer responds, then you need medical attention. Okay. Um, there are the red flags we had mentioned, there's the fever, mm. if there's a fever, then you need medical attention. Um, if you develop weakness, of mainly it will happen in the lower limbs, if you develop weakness of the lower limbs, if you have a tingling sensation, yeah. those the ones we call pins mm -hmm. and needles, if you have numbness, um, then definitely you need to seek uh, medical attention. Okay. Uh, if there is a history of severe trauma, uh, you need to, to seek medical attention. Mm -hmm. why, yes. wh why, in most cases, does it get to that point where it's chronic? Um, most of the time when it gets to the chronic level is because in majority of cases, back pain is self-limiting. Okay. Uh, you'll have back pain for about a week. You don't. You don't go to see a doctor. Uh, you don't do any. You don't take any medication. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some home remedies, and after a few days, you feel you're okay. You mm -hmm. resume your physical activity or your job, and uh, you respond well. Okay. Well, speaking of which, then one would want to know. Well, diagnosis. I'm sure some of the key things that you've spoken about mm -hmm. would be what would be used to determine what really could be causing this. Mm -hmm. But are there surgery uh, types that are available for back pains? Mm -hmm. And I mean, how then do we get to have our treatment for the same mm -hmm. uh, aside from the surgery aspect of it? I mean, can we get non-surgical options mm -hmm. that would uh, create remedy? Yes, Linda. Majority of the cases are managed, uh, what we say, conservatively, other than uh, surgically. Uh, and in most cases, uh, the patient education is usually the key, okay. the key thing, because as we have said, uh, position and activity are the main things that will cause us uh, back pain. Mm -hmm. So the patient education on the things that do, the does and the, the do's does and not, don'ts, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So the things you, you should do, the things you should reduce, the things you shouldn't do at all are okay. the most important when it comes to back pain. And you'll find majority of patients respond to that. Um, from patient education, you go now to medical management. Okay. Uh, medical management mainly is just painkillers. We give painkillers. Uh, we'll try and start off with mild painkillers and see whether they respond. Uh, at times we may give a uh, another medication called a muscle relaxant because most of the time it's our muscles that are being uh, offended by our abnormal position. Okay. Uh, most of the time if the pain is so severe we might go to a stronger medication like the opioids but we try to avoid that as, mm -hmm. as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a big role when it comes to other remedies like physiotherapy, uh, heat therapy, okay. uh, chiropractic, and uh, there's also some evidence that acupuncture also plays a big role in controlling in controlling back pain. Before we get to the mm -hmm. to the surgical bit of it, surgery is usually the the last resort, okay. and uh, we avoid surgery as much as possible. Right. There's a saying in surgery that says the best surgeon is the one who knows 
when not to operate. Wow. But not when to operate. Okay, that's yes. an incredible one mm. to, you know, close it out, but not before we talk about briefly in a mm -hmm. minute or so the connection of the same and nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, we're walking into the next segment. Uh, in most cases where we talk about the immune, we talk about nutrition and all that. Mm -hmm. I remember my, my dad used to, you know, advise me to take lots and lots of calcium, yes. lots and lots of bone soup and all that. He yes. said, you know, this will help your muscles, your spinal mm -hmm. cord and all this, everything. Mm -hmm. So when we come to back pains, mm -hmm. is food really crucial in terms of trying to rest this? Um, I think diet plays a big role in almost Generally everything almost in, our, in yeah. our body. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially anywhere the bone is being mentioned, bone yes. health is very important. So uh, whatever you take in uh, really matters concerning, especially also whatever weight you will gain from your, from yeah. your diet. Right. And you say weight really uh, contributes towards our back pain. The health of our bone is very important, so mm -hmm. we need a lot of calcium. Uh, we need a lot of phosphorus in our body. Um, so the milk, yeah. the, the, if possible, the calcium supplements. And mainly you'll see the ladies who are postmenopausal will mainly get back pain because their bone becomes weak, okay. weak and weaker with, uh, with the age as we withdraw the estrogen from, from their body. So um, diet is key. Uh, for healthy bone okay. and if the bone is healthy it will carry your body weight well and uh, on the other hand the junk food that will give us a lot of weight that mm -hmm. will affect also our bone in terms of carrying a lot of load is is not advocated for. Oh. Yes. All right, uh, Doctor, uh, thank you so much for the great insights. I am sure we're going to have more sessions on this. We get to the practical aspect of it because sometimes when we talk mm -hmm. uh, medicine and we really do not have the practicability of it, people tend to lose um, interest, but not really lose interest for them that are probably interested in what it is that we are talking because back pains you know, are crucial that I'm sure most of the people also are actively involved in getting to understand just how best they can run away from this. So in about 30 seconds or so, I'd allow you to give, you know, the viewer uh, your parting shots or sentiments and maybe just a word of advice on how best they can ensure that they stay put and take care of their backs. Okay. Hmm. Um, so first and foremost, we say the weight is uh, the thing to avoid. Yeah. Uh, two, a healthy diet. Make sure you're taking a lot of calcium. Three, and very important, physical activity. Uh, let's get to the road. Let's jog a bit. Yeah. Let's do our aerobics, mm -hmm. if possible, our yoga. Uh, and it will help our, our muscles to relax better. Uh, we get better sleep True. and get better rest. Mm -hmm. um, I think something I didn't mention was about uh, back pain and sleeping position. Okay. Uh, and I think it's very important. It's very because, common. Yes. If you fact. sleep six hours in, in 24 hours, then it means you sleep a, a quarter of your day. Yes. Um, and the sleeping position has been attributed to be causing a lot of back pain. All right. So research has proven that people who sleep, especially if you sleep on your tummy. Okay. Uh, you sleep on your tummy and you bring one knee towards the chest you will certainly get back pain. Oh. So it's advisable you sleep on your, on Side. your sides. Make sure you have a firm mattress. Uh, a firm mattress that is flat. Yes. Uh, not the ones that dip in the center. And then, um, yeah, sleep on your sides and not on your tummy. Okay. Yes. Well, uh, that one is a good one to close yes. from because then it is important. Most of the times we argue just how best do you position yourself while you're sleeping. And anyway, do you even have control? when you're sleeping sometimes you do not know uh, the sleeping position, position yes you you're taking an everything <laughs> but then again at least the basics like having the best mattress yes. a good mattress for that matter mm -hmm. uh, is, is is something that is also going to come in handy thank you so much dr thuori geisha yes. Uh, Dr. Thurigisha is an orthopedic surgeon and we're looking forward to having some more and more even as we talk matters health. It was good having you this morning and we're looking forward to another conversation some other time. Otherwise, we're not closing it at that. We're still talking matters nutrition like we say. Nutrition is key. And so today we'll be talking about how best you can boost your immune with Dr. Joan after this break. Well, to matters nutrition and talking about boosting your immune, this is something that you've heard about for the longest of time. And we tend to ask ourselves, are there situations where you can actually reach to that point where you say, you know what, I have successfully 
boosted my immune so we'll be having this conversation this morning it's on matters nutrition alongside dr john rose or rose john depending on how you want to <laughs> put it who's a nutritionist good to have you dr after a long time you. have you been here this year uh, yeah. It was we'll last year? It's oh, this was this year. year? <laughs> <laughs> Good to Thank have you. So it's much. because the last time we spoke, <laughs> you had mentioned about what it is that you're going to do mm -hmm. so you can take us through mm -hmm. the process of boosting our immune. Mm -hmm. And so you said you're going to fix something for sure. us, which I think is what it is that we see today. So we've been sure. excited all mm -hmm. that while mm -hmm. waiting for you. Okay. So it looked like it was forever, mm -hmm. but I'm glad you're here finally. Thank you so much. All right. So take us through. One would want to ask some of the basic questions. Just how best can I get to boost my immune i mean are there chances mm -hmm. that actually immune can be boosted in the first place mm -hmm. i mean do i have to go on supplements do mm -hmm. i have to can i do it naturally back at home can i do it you know simply back at home what are some of the things that i need to use to get to that point so mm -hmm. i think you're in a better position to take us through all that process and that's what we are excited for this morning okay mm -hmm. thank you so much um my what i do is to enhance or to help my patient at home how can I help myself when I'm at home where there is no doctor? Okay. Because um, not every time you'll get a doctor, but we have some things that are just within our houses right. that we can use them to boost our immunity. Mm -hmm. So when we think about immunity, what is immunity? Right. It is the, I can say it's an energy within that helps the body to fight diseases. Okay. It's the power within the body that the body itself can heal itself. Uh, uh, apart from using the supplement you are saying, how can you enhance the healing power of the body? That's what you call immunity. Right. Or the power of the body to fight with pathogens like bacteria, viruses and germs. Mm -hmm. That is what we call immunity. And most of the people, when they hear about immunity, uh, they think of diseases first. Okay. That is the first thing that clicks in our mind. So if my immune is down, definitely I'll be deceased. Okay. If my immune is up, the body will be able to fight for itself. So why is it that my immunity is down? What makes my immunity to go down? down yeah. It is what I eat every day. Right. You cannot just wake up one day and find your immunity is at spa. Mm -hmm. So you have to work for it. You have to feed the body with the right food mm -hmm. that will boost your immunity. Are, are there certain levels that we speak about when you talk about, you know, a proper immune system mm -hmm. i mean at what level should it be for you to say that well my mm -hmm. immune system is good mm -hmm. there are some symptoms okay. that the body shows that you have a good immune system like boil movements you have uh two two times or maybe at least once a day you have a boil movement all right uh, sleeping you have a better sleep you know most of the people they don't sleep they go to bed they turn around turn around turn, until morning why? Because the immunity is down. So when you go to bed and sleep, that shows that your immunity is at spa. Skin complexion. When your skin complexion glows, it tells you that the, the, the immunity is at spa. Another thing is that when you feel fatigued, you are always fatigued. You, are, you don't have energy. It is in the morning. You have woken up in the morning, but you don't have energy. That shows that the immunity is down. Is down. Is down. Mm -hmm. Another thing, fever and flu, that one definitely shows you that the immunity is down. We have allergic diseases like asthma, bronchitis, allergy, even skin allergy. That one shows you that your immunity is down. Mm -hmm. So when you have such symptoms, sometimes headache, sometimes like the guy have said backache, you know, it is telling you that you have to do something because your immunity is going down. Are, are we all born with the same level of immunity? No. Okay. That is what why. What's the difference? That is why you can find somebody smoking for s over 60 years and that person is still there. Okay. There's a person who has smoked for two months and the person is dead. Because the immunity, we have different types of immunity. How much can your immune system tolerate abuse? That is what we do. We can eat the same food in the same family, right. but one of us get diabetic, one of us get hypertension, one of us get asthma. It depends with the immunity. How strong is your immunity to tolerate abuse? What did your parents eat when you were being conceived? Okay. That also determines your immunity. So that's why I say most of the time, if you're planning to conceive, make sure that the, your environment, the body is free of toxins, free of impurities, free of metabolic waste, and you have pumped the body for three months with vitamins and minerals okay. so that your immunity can be at spa 
the child that you are going to get, also the immunity will be at spa. Mm -hmm. So we can have a problem with our immunity from the word go, from the time you are conceived in, right. our, in our bodies. Yeah. Okay, well, so tender age, how best can you boost their immune system? Because then, well, this is such a young baby, they might not even know whether it is okay or it is not okay or for that matter. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, how do they get to that level? How do you understand as a parent that then there is need to push for this, especially with the current children, you know, system that we have today that you have to breastfeed, cons you know, consecutively for, seven, for six, six months. school months yeah. without giving the baby mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. that could be foreign. How do you get to boost their immune? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. The People doesn't get uh, why are we breastfeeding kids for six months. Okay. They don't get that concept. Right. They say even uh, like my mom was telling me, the day I, you were born, I gave they you food the same, same day. Yes, I know. <laughs> I fought with my mom because of that for the longest of time. Exactly. Yeah. So I, the, the thing is the food we take today, it's not the food that we were taking then. Mm -hmm. It is highly contaminated. Okay. So when we introduce food before the, the immunity of that child is strong enough, to tolerate that food in the system, okay. the baby will get rea re reactions, reactions on those foods. Mm -hmm. So that is why we breastfeed for six good months. Okay. We have herbicides, pesticide. The water is uh, even we don't give water. You have to breastfeed that are for six months without water. Mm -hmm. So when we introduce water, water is also contaminated. If, if, if we're taking the same food that is contaminated, say, yes. as a breastfeeding or a lactating mother, mm -hmm. uh, how then does this uh, get to, to, to go well with the baby? Because then what you're I told do. whatever it is that you eat is what it is that is going to determine whether the baby mm -hmm. gets all the nutrients mm -hmm. that they would require. So mm -hmm. if this food is contaminated, mm -hmm. how then do we guarantee a scenario where you know the, 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 the negatives or, or the, the impurities will be sieved mm -hmm. and it gets to the, pap uh, to the baby when it is okay mm -hmm. that's what we say yeah. when when you think about getting a baby think about the right food okay the first thing avoid junk foods because they will contaminate what you are carrying inside your body another thing when you start breastfeeding now you are now trying to bring up a healthy baby avoid all foods that will make the baby to get sick like refined foods they will bring constipation okay. in your baby and you yourself so the more the colon is packed with the mucoid, or we call it plague, All right. it will be absorbed in the blood. What will happen? The baby will still suck the same thing. Mm -hmm. That is why we find most of the toddlers, they have skin rashes. Okay. Another one, they have um, some inflammation on top of their skin. skin okay. Why? Because mm -hmm. whatever the mother will eat, that is exactly the baby will feed on. Okay. So we say, as a mother, you are breastfeeding or you are thinking to get a baby. Try to avoid as much as possible junk food, refined food, and whatever you are drinking. Because most of the people, they like just taking tea. They don't know that tea toxifies the blood. Right. So they need to know, if I want to get a healthy baby with a strong immunity, what am I supposed to eat? That's why we go back to the fruits. Okay. We go back to the vegetable juices. We go back to fruit juices, fruit salads. And most of the time, you are carrying a baby you need to make sure 60 percent of the food you eat it is raw food okay. not cooked food because right. more of cooked food is acidic mm -hmm. more of cooked food doesn't feed the cells it feeds the stomach mm -hmm. so when you keep feeding the stomach you are not feeding your cells the immunity will go down okay. think about your body like a trash we have two trash here one trash is full of waste another one is a clean trash which one will attract more cockroaches the one with trash. The one with trash. Yeah. The same thing with our bodies. So the more we keep putting food in our body and the wrong food that we put in our body, we attract more uh, bacteria, bacteria, viruses, yeah. Yeah. and germs. Okay. Because the body is full now. Mm -hmm. and, and the bucket has to complain that I'm already full and I want to overflow. Okay. And when the bucket overflows, that's when you get, you find people say, my, oh, my kidneys are not working, my liver is not working, my immunity is down, I don't know what to do. But you have overflowed your bucket with a lot of food, you know? The body cannot cleanse at the same time it's digesting food. Okay. The body works as the, the, your normal duties that you do every day in the house. If you have a visitor and you are sweeping the house, then the bell rings. Will you continue sweeping? No. No, you'll go and see the visitor who is coming in. Right. You'll stop sweeping and you, can you entertain the visitor. At the same then time. the visitor goes. Another one comes in as you are sweeping. You stop and you continue entertaining the visitor. So if it happens the whole day, will you have time to sweep? No. No. 
You won't have time to sleep. Okay. The same thing with our bodies. When we keep eating, eating, the body was doing cleansing, it will stop. It won't cleanse again. It will start digesting what you have put in. Mm -hmm. Then you continue eating. When it is starting to cleanse, now you continue eating. And that is what brings our immunity down. We put too much. We put a lot of pressure in our body mm -hmm. with the food we eat every day. And that is what causes the immunity to go down. Done. Well, yeah, We call it food pressure. Uh -huh. You put a lot of food in your system. Okay. Yeah. Well, by now, I'm sure the person who's watching us mm -hmm. uh, has an idea of what it would look like for someone's immune to go down and equally what it would look like mm -hmm. for them to have their um, immune you know system well sure. or well boosted for that matter mm -hmm. and so the question then would be uh, is there a way that one can really boost their immune yes based on what it is that they eat and this is the point where i like dr rose coming on set because well in most cases mm -hmm. she will grace us with beautiful things that we look at but these things are as beautiful as they would be when they get into our bodies exactly. and so I'd love for you to take us through, you know, your most basic remedy in terms of one getting to boost the immune mm -hmm. without having to go through supplements mm -hmm. and, you know, medication yeah. and all that. Okay. Now, uh, we have simple remedies at home, as we have said, and we have food that boosts our immunity. Uh, the media, you have been telling us about vitamin C because of the COVID-19 that will help us to boost the immunity. Yes. I found some people who said that my brother used to eat everything, my sister used to eat everything that has vitamin C, but they, he was or she was overcome by COVID. Why? Mm -hmm. Because inside your body, as I have said, the body is packed of toxins. So if I eat these uh, lemons right. today, if I take lemons and it's very high in vitamin C, it won't reach to my cellular level. And even if it will reach, the content will be low. Okay. Why? Because the absorption, there is hindrance of absorption of vitamin C by toxins in the body. All right. And that's why the other time we talked about detoxifying the system. The first thing you need to do is you cleanse the colon, you cleanse the blood, you cleanse the kidney, you cleanse the liver, you detoxify the system so that when you're using the, or, uh, the lemons, all the oranges, because they are full of vitamin C, the cells will be able to absorb. Okay. But without that, you'll be eating everything good. It's like taking a cup of, of uh, porridge, and then you finish the porridge, and then you want to drink water. And then you put water in the same, same cup without washing the cup. It does not work. It doesn't work. Yes. The same thing that's what we are doing now. We are doing a lot of lemons to boost our, our immune system, to have that vitamin C. Yeah. But we have not cleansed the system. Okay. The body is clogged up. The brain is clogged up. The kidneys are clogged up. They need to be open. The channels need to be open. So when you take lemons at home, they will work now because right. you have cleansed the system. Okay. So lemons, they are very high in vitamin C. And anytime the immunity is down, definitely the vitamin C, you have deficiency. Okay. We have the supplements of vitamin C. But sometimes I say it's good to take natural. Just extract natural vitamin C. All this right. one also gives us, uh, this is uh, yellow paper. Yes, capsicum. Ca capsicum. Right. This one also have vitamin C. All right. One of these is equivalent to one orange. Okay. One of these. Okay. And I say when you are juicing it, because this was supposed to juice, mm -hmm. when, not when it is not cooked. cooked with, okay. No, 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 no. When it is raw, okay. you make smoothie with it, but remove the seeds. All right. The seeds are toxic. All the right. seeds of any paper are toxic. Is it so? Yeah. The seeds of any paper are toxic. Okay. And on top of that, they irritate the walls of the stomach. Okay. So they can create ulcers. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you remove the seeds. You take this on one capsicum or um, they call it ho-ho. Yes. Yes. It will help you with vitamin C. It's very high in vitamin C. Also, we have the red one. We have the red one here. Yes, it's also high in now. vitamin C. Right. We have the other green one. The green one is full yes. of antioxidant, okay. not vitamin C. So these ones will help you a lot. Mm -hmm. If you don't have uh, capsicum, you have the orange All or right. the tangerine. We have oranges, we have tangerine, we have pomegranate. Mm. This one. Yes. This one is rare to get because it's very, I just saw them in Israel a lot. There are oh, a yes. lot there. There are, there are yeah. very many down there. Exactly. Okay. So this is one is very, very effective, especially the juice. But here it's extremely expensive. So yes. instead of going for pomegranate, use capsicum. Capsicum still serves the purpose. Lemons is right. very high in vitamin C. Then another mineral for immunity is zinc. I tried to get my pumpkin seeds. I didn't get them where oh, I put them. Okay, but yes. we have the pumpkin seeds. You had them the other time. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so the pumpkin seeds, they are very high in zinc. So when you have a deficiency of zinc, it is because... The, the immunity will go down. Okay. And why do we have deficiency and we are still eating fruits and vegetables? 
Why do we have the deficiency? Right. As I have said, the, when the body is full of toxins, it will not work. Even it if won't you work. Well. Even if you take from morning to evening, it won't work. We need to cleanse fast so that when we take good food, it will be absorbed to the cellular level. Mm -hmm. That's why I say feed your cells, not your stomach. Because okay. when you feed your stomach, your cells will suffer, will have deficiency. If you feed your cells, your stomach will work properly. Now, we come to simple remedies that can help you when you're at home to, to boost your immunity. Yeah. Here, we have, we call them pickles. These are pickles. Okay. We have two types. We have fermented pickles in water, mm -hmm. and we have fermented pickles in honey. Okay. This one is honey. Those people who cannot use honey, we use water. All right. And we make what we call the base. So we mix the base, we add to the honey, and then you put what you want to put inside. Mm -hmm. This is garlic. So this garlic is soaked in honey. For how long? Uh, you can soak it for a whole for month. As long, as as long, long, as long time want. as you want. Okay. Yes, the more you soak it, the more it becomes effective to the body. Right. So we say, we, 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 put, we add value mm -hmm. to, the, to the garlic so it can help you more. Okay. So when you soak this garlic inside the, the honey, mm -hmm. and the, we, we, we mix three types of the base so that you can add honey, and then now you add garlic. So when you, uh, you soak it like this, you, you, uh, you add it value, and what it does to the body, it will give you also probiotics. Okay. And when you have deficiency of probiotics, uh, friendly bacteria in the lining of the colon, like Tobacerus, Acidophilus, the immunity will go down, definitely. All right. Because the health of your immunity depends with the health of your gut. That is what we say. It has to be clean. It has to be clean, mm -hmm. and it has to have those friendly bacteria. All right. We have to have two bacteria, the bad one and the good one. They have to balance. Okay. But the good ones, they should be 90%. The bad ones should be 10% in the body. Mm -hmm. So when you ferment this one, it is very high in selenium. Selenium is a mineral that helps you to boost your immunity. This one is very high in antioxidant because it's garlic. Garlic is very effective for your heart. Mm -hmm. So after cleansing now the system, and maybe you have things like high blood pressure, heart disease, you see, yes. and you're not allergic to honey. Mm -hmm. This one will help you a lot to boost your immunity at home mm -hmm. so that the disease that you have, it will start healing. All right. Garlic is everywhere. So how much, uh, what quantity is one supposed to take? Uh, a spoon? You take a tablespoon. Okay. And uh, I would like you to taste. All right. Okay. So are you supposed to chew the... You can chew the garlic. Ah. The smell is a bit down. It's not like... Uh, <laughs> because it's been soaked for it's quite a exactly, while, yeah? Exactly, exactly. Okay. Now, all medicinal properties are in this honey. Mm -hmm. So, when you taste the honey, mm -hmm. you will feel that taste of garlic. I have literally smelt it. Exactly. Okay, so when, when you take this, that <laughs> means you can take it twice a day, once a day, or... You take two tablespoons okay. three times a day. It has chumvi. Salt? Yeah, Himalayan salt. Oh, you salt. put salt? Yes. Ah, all right, okay. <laughs> Himalayan salt Just helps us to extract the medicinal value mm -hmm. from the garlic. All right. Yes. Okay. So with the honey now, the honey will soak the medicinal properties, mm -hmm. and then you take it. So you take two tablespoons in the morning, two tablespoons lunchtime, two tablespoons in the evening. Okay. If you are working, three in the morning, three in the evening. How and another quick, thing how you should note, okay. garlic is not supposed to be used with some, by somebody who is not bleeding. All right. If you nose bleed, never use not. garlic. Because garlic is a blood thinner. Okay. So most of the people, you find them nose bleeding, but they're still eating garlic without knowing that. It's the, it's the main it's a, cause. It's the main cause. Yes. Ah. So if you're nose bleeding, or when you cut yourself, you bleed a lot. You are avoid easily, garlic. You avoid garlic completely. Mm -hmm. Because garlic is a blood thinner. Okay. You know, we say, because everything is natural, it's good for me. No. So when you have such symptoms, even if your child is nose bleeding, avoid the garlic com garlic. completely. Mm -hmm. We come to, this is, is ginger. Okay. You will soak also ginger. And then ginger is good for respiratory problems. So when your immunity is down, yeah. I talked about allergy, any allergic reaction. Mm -hmm. That's when you have flu. Instead of maybe running, going for fresh garlic, you don't have that time. And uh, maybe you want to go to work. So you just soak them and leave them in your shelf. All right. So every time you need it, you can also sprinkle on top of your salads right. as a salad dressing. Okay. So we have also turmeric. This is turmeric. Turmeric is, is turmeric or, yes. ca or carrots? Yes. This is turmeric. All right. It's an anti inflammatory. Yes. So it is very, very effective for your immunity mm -hmm. because so of you curcumin. All these have been soaked. Uh, 
in honey, honey. Yes. yes right. In B, because of tannin, there's something we call tannin, isotamine B. I have put Himalayan. You don't put any salt. So I say, if you need them, you come to my office. I'll show you how to do it them. But they won't work unless you detox. All right. That is why people have been doing garlic, ginger, everything, and it doesn't work for their system. Then they are like, even these things, they don't work. Mm. They, 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 this one, they yeah, have the medicinal fast, yeah, value. value. They have medicinal value. Mm -hmm. But for them to work, open up your channels. Open up your elimination channels. Cleanse the system from the cellular level. And that is what we do in our office. Mm -hmm. We cleanse the system, we cleanse the kidney, the liver, the blood. Then I show you simple remedies. How many days or how, what's, the, what's the duration before one starts experiencing the, uh, the results in the event that they have detoxed well? One month. You see the You'll difference. see the difference after okay. one month. All right. Yes. If you are not sleeping, you start sleeping. If you are oversleeping also, you, you will, will feel energetic again in the okay. morning. All right. If you have headache, it will go. If you have nausea, it will go. If mm -hmm. you have gastritis, it will go. Those are symptoms of telling you that the body is overloaded. Mm -hmm. So it is yearning for internal bath. That is, those are the symptoms. So after now cleansing, eat food that will boost your immunity. Mm -hmm. And you are good to go. You're good to go. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Rose mm -hmm. John. That is great. I mean, simple tips that would help you out there. Mm -hmm. The only goodness that I always have is when I have sessions with Dr. Rose, I come out here a better person. The other time I detoxed, mm -hmm. oh my friend, <laughs> oh my friend, story for another day, story right. for another day. But well, mm -hmm. it was indeed helpful mm -hmm. and I'm grateful for that. So mm -hmm. water, yes. as we close it, if okay. that is a good, how important is water? When 70% it comes to is water in the body. Okay. 80% of your brain is water. So when you don't drink enough water, you get dehydrated. Mm -hmm. When you get dehydrated, you get complication in the body. Because the first thing, millions of people, they complain of headache. I have headache. But they say, because I drink tea, I won't drink water. <laughs> I ask my clients, because now you drink tea, mm -hmm. you don't need water. I mean, honestly, if I take my juice... Have you ever seen a doctor I... putting a drip of tea when you don't have water no. in the hospital? No. <laughs> Water is water, and nothing can supplement water. So the more you take any other things, you need to take more water. Oh, yes. Especially in the morning when you wake up. If you don't have gastritis and hypercidity, mm -hmm. use lemons in oh. warm water okay. and drink. Okay. That one will help your liver to open up. And it will help you, it will help the digestion throughout the day. Yes. If you have gastritis, we have to detox first. We remove the metabolic waste. We cleanse the liver and the kidney. We balance their chemistry. And then now we start using lemons and they will work. Mm -hmm. People are not sick, Linda. No. People are dying or they have pain right. in the hospitals. They are on drugs because of toxins and metabolic waste in the colon. I say, if you want to have waste, remove the waste. Okay. Yes. That's why you see people with big tummy. Yes. If you want to have waste, remove the waste. All right. So when you remove the waste, <laughs> the diseases will go. It's a good Problem time twist go. right there, yes? Yeah. Uh, exercise, mm -hmm. remove the waste, mm -hmm. and you'll be looking all pretty mm -hmm. and all good. You know, when you march into her office, you will pay for all that information. It's true. So thank me. Thank TV47's Morning Cafe mm -hmm. for allowing you that moment to, you know, get all this advice for free. But all the same, again, we encourage that you equally sometimes seek medical attention, sure, seek special, sure. you know, uh, you know, special attention for that matter. Mm -hmm. You can only get to have the details when you march into, you know, uh, her office, into the offices of other doctors that can be instrumental in helping you on that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Dr. Tari, for mm -hmm. the great insights this morning as we look forward to have you another time mm -hmm. and we learn of other ways of ensuring that our bodies are well kept based on what it is mm -hmm. that we eat. Dr. Tari maintains that we are not sick. It's just that we do not know the right things that we put in our very own bodies or the right or the things that we actually let go you know that are in our very own bodies remember tomorrow we'll be having a very interesting conversation on the baraza that is on tuesdays most of the times we have these sessions where we have discussions on very important and intense discussions for that matter right from the time we start the show all the way to 9 a.m and so today tomorrow we'll be looking at matters economy we engage mama boga we engage different people from different quarters of matters business as we get to look at just how best do we get ourselves back to you know equilibrium back on ground we cry we complain we talk about everything but importantly we seek solutions so tomorrow it is that conversation that you do not want to miss out on make sure that you tune in as early as 6 a.m because you 
we'll be thankful later as of what it is that we'll have gotten out of that particular conversation. Asante Sana Daktari once again, that is where then we close it. And we say it was good having you from the word go. The feedback is immense and we are thankful for that. And again, we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. My name is Linda Alela. Daktari, how do we get you in 30 seconds? Okay. Uh, my cell phone number, I'll give them my cell phone number, is 0723390411. My cell phone number is 0723390411. You'll get me through that number. Indeed. Yeah. You can always call to consult. Mm -hmm. And of course, thank me later. That's where we wind up. It was good having you. I get to see you again tomorrow. Same time, same place. It's around.